Hey guys, what's up? It's James Stewart. We're here on Bubbles World, the podcast. Now, it's going to be a little bit different. I have a special guest in the house, a guest that you might recognize, a guest that we like to call here the German Chocolate, a.k.a. Ken Roxon. We have a special announcement he wants to show and share with the world, so let's get into it. Like, there, there's this announcement. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of speculation, and, and let's just get into it and talk about, like, what's going on? Like, what's going on with... The future and your relationship with Honda, like, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess why, why we're here today, like yeah. just. So I'm in a position right now. Um, my future has always been kind of set in stone for a long time and months, if not a year in advance. And, um, this last week, you know, um, it's, uh, it's a funky feeling, but basically I'm a free agent at this point, which is, it's kind of mm -hmm. crazy. I've never been in that position, but, um, it was ultimately, you know, these races that, I committed to these overseas races and it, you know, it's not three anymore. It's two. I haven't raced over in Europe in a, in a long time. I've never been to Australia. So for me, the decision to, to race those races was, was fairly easy, especially this late in my career. Um, it was the right time. It's just been way too long. And, you know, since this isn't a full series yet, and, um, I had the opportunity to, you know, make that deal and, um, you know, which was a shocker to me, Honda decided to pull the offer that they gave me, um, you know, a week or a couple of weeks ago, which by the way, was a great offer. I mean, if I wanted to go after the money, then that would, would have been the smart thing for me to do. But I, I have committed to these races and I just, I didn't feel comfortable at all to leave fans hanging. There's a lot of people overseas that don't, you know, don't have the money to come over here and watch us race. So for me to go back over to Europe and Australia next to also having a little bit of vacation, you know what I mean? It's kind of something that uh, we have, we don't really have much time to do so. Um, and I wasn't ready to, to disappoint the fans and, and let, you know, pull out of this uh, World Supercross thing. And um, I decided to stick with it and, and Honda decided to shockingly just pull the offer. And um, it was one of those things that had me a little bit shocked, but you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a funky situation to be in, Yeah. but at the same time, I'm sticking to my guns because I feel like I owe it to the fans and I owe it to myself. And, um, I was looking forward to this whole thing, uh, months and months ago. And yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So let me just be clear. So your, your plan was to, you had a contract with Honda or an offer from Honda Correct. and it was to do supercross, uh, supercross or outdoor both, or just like, was it a one year deal, two year deal? Yeah. Like, um. This, the offer that I got was basically for Supercross 2023 and mm. Supercross only. Mm. Um, it was for great money. You know, er, everything made sense. And, and I was very appreciative that that, that happened. Um, unfortunately, you know, I made, I made this deal that I had with World Supercross uh, months and months ago. And I didn't even, I was in contract, yes, with Honda. But we had a mutual agreement that, hey, we're not a big fan of this. But for this year, it's a startup and things like that, that, um, you know, they were going to be okay with it. So we didn't worry about anything. And at that point, when we made this deal, I didn't even have an offer yet or anything for the, for the next year. So I am legally, I legally have every right to do these overseas races. I've never had anything in my contract that um, actually keeps me from it. But over these last few years, I wasn't ready to just go over there and, and, and race overseas races because my focus was always and only American supercross and yep. motocross. Yep. But being in this position now and, and kind of towards the end of my career, it, it was just time. Like I really wanted to kind of travel the world again and, and see some different things. And, and uh, it's probably been since maybe 2013 or something like that, that I've raced in Europe or in Germany actually. So it's been a long time and actually way too long. And um, I know a lot of people are coming out to, to watch us race and I committed to it and that you know i'm sticking to my guns and i really want to do this it's unfortunate the way this has gone with the with the honda offer but at the same time uh i'm a free agent at this point and and it's uh it's an integrity thing you know i've committed to something and and i owe it to the fans and um so i'm sticking to it yeah i mean i respect you for that i've had um incidents um you know i got hurt in 2015 i believe i was going to go race over in australia and that that part that part killed me because like they, you know, the fans, they, they buy tickets. They want to see Ken rocks and they want to see James Stewart and whatever the reasons are like, if you can't make it, it just, it, it hurts. And, and I could tell like, you're, you're like me, like you love the fans you like, and, um, 
you know, just a, a showman doing, doing things oh. and, and being a part of that. So I can understand how frustrating and, and, and bummed and, um, where, where you are with this, but Honda, they, so their offer and when, you know, and negotiating talking, they knew you were going to do this. They knew it was a possibility months ago. Right. Totally. Yeah. And, and so when did it, when did it become a problem? Like when did they bring this, this part up that, Hey, like it's either one way or the other. Yeah, it, it was, you know, they, they were well aware of it a long time ago. And I guess it was never really that big of a deal. Not to this point where we're in the situation right now. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it was never, never like that. And they were totally fine with it. And of course, you know, we, we know the reasons, all these factory teams and stuff. And I think for the coming years, it's a different story because, it, you know, it's going to be a lot more of a legit thing. But for me, um, like I just, the reasons that I gave you earlier, it was simply because of that. And I feel like this shit was for me to do it. And, uh, I feel like it just came up very recently, actually, when I got the offer that, um, those races were excluded, you know, in this offer and we're kind of just like, I thought we thought maybe that was going to be for next year. Yeah. And, you know, obviously there's a, you know, many, many conversations, um, that we have had with them, but like the final thing was, you know, they drew the line in the sand and it was plain and simple that they are going to pull the offer back. If I decide to do the, uh, those off season races. And luckily I am in a position where money doesn't have to make that decision. You know what I mean? I, I'm lucky enough to have done well for myself and, and I'm set. So this is not about a money thing at all, because like I said before, I could have taken the Honda deal and, and would have been off better, but for me, it's an integrity thing, and uh, they drew the line in the sand, and you know now we're here. Yeah, yeah. The the Honda deal is off. It's off the table. Yep. Right now, um, the Honda deal was pulled, and um, again, I'm a free agent, and this is not. I want to make this very clear that with me doing this, I am not waiting for a fill in ride, or I'm not hoping or waiting for somebody to get hurt for me to have a ride. This is not about that at all. But if a team is willing to uh, to give me an offer and they, they legitimately want me to ride for them, you know, I'm available. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to make that very clear that this is not about, I'm not waiting for anybody to get hurt. Um, as of right now, I'm super motivated for 2023 supercross and motocross. And I'm also going to prepare as if I'm going racing. Um, and that, and that won't change. So yeah, um, that's the plan right now. We will see. I feel like, um, over the next couple, not a couple months, but honestly, over the next few days and few weeks, I feel like, um, there are always things popping up and, and those are at the same time, kind of exciting times for me. Yeah. Yeah. So when is the uh, first uh, round of world supercross? Um, the first round is on the, on the eighth of next month. Uh -huh. So it's coming up really quick. It's kind of, it's kind of nuts. You know, when you get back into supercross, you kind of feel a little bit like a fish out of water, but yeah. at the same time, we've yeah. done it so long. Like it comes back pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so that'll be that. And, and after that England, I'm actually going over to race Red Bull straight rhythm. Cause, uh, obviously Red Bull has been a partner yeah. of mine since I was like 12 or 13 years old. So I feel like I, uh, I want to pay them a little bit too. Cause they, they've been a great, great sponsor, a great partner of mine for a long time. So, yeah. um, especially with this season's, um, Red Bull straight rhythm is going to be a lot different with it being on the beach and I'm yeah. um, in Huntington. So it's going to be a cool deal. And again, this is a situation that I have never been in, but at the same time I'm embracing it. And if anything, this just motivates me like crazy. Yeah. So my, my next question was, so it's on the, the, the eighth next month. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you, what bike are you riding over there? So for now I'm, I'm definitely going to stick with Honda. You know, that's what I know. And in this short period of time, I, I, it's definitely the smartest time. And I, and it's not like I am wanting to get away from this bike or whatever. I'm trying to look at this all as a mellow and I want to have my head on my shoulders and not make first off rational this, uh, irrational, irrational decisions or anything like yeah. that. So it's not about, and honestly, it's not that I won't sign with Honda in the future. Um, it's just right now they, they made it very clear. They drew the line in the sand. Um, they pulled the offer, which is, which is a hard pill to swallow for me. Yeah. And it's a difficult situation, but at the same time, uh, you know, if they, I don't know if you want to say come to their senses, because I don't think that th those two races should really determine whether they want me or not. Like, yeah. I don't really, I don't really think that that's fair. Yeah. So again, the doors are still open. But with what they had to say, um, we are in this position right now. So in the future, uh, this is not a, this is not something like, hey, I will never race Honda again or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, like that's course. all still open. But um, I have to focus on myself and 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 stick to my guns. And and right now, I really just want to go 
and enjoy my fans over in Europe that I haven't seen in forever. Yeah. And kind of making a little bit of a vacation out of it. You know, I've been been in the U.S. for a while and I don't I don't get to do, go to different countries um, hardly ever at this point because we're very busy racing from January through September and then also going to Australia. I've never been to Australia like, you know, that just all sounded super appealing to me. And I don't no, like this year was just a year for me to do it. It's plain and simple. Like in the future, it's a different story. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, we, we don't know what's going to happen, but at the same time, right now is a good time for me to do it. And we were very honest, very upfront, and everybody was well aware of the situation. And it's just a bummer that it ended up turning out the way it is. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand. I, I get, like I said, I can appreciate it. I know the fans well because you basically chose to to honor your commitment totally uh, for them and that might jeopardize your ride with honda i mean you had a contract with them so no we we understand that and then i appreciate it i know that's what i was telling you about the australian thing the biggest thing that hurt me was just uh like the fans like they were they mm -hmm. were bum i was hurt so i couldn't go over there so yeah. even in your situation like i know it's really hard because you're like there's really no reason why we can't you're just in a situation where mm -hmm. you know you can't you can't go honda decide they want to go against that or, or whatever they decide to stick and do the usa um us and um it's going to be up to you so it's up to you to go over there and do it so we appreciate that and i know they will too i guess my question now is is were they okay with the straight rhythm? Like, have they been okay with that? Or, or is it is it just strictly the World Supercross or all off-season racing? I mean, here's the pro No, straight rhythm included. Um, and I, I get that side of things too, because for Honda, it is very difficult to gather because if I'm doing it, I'm sure that, you know, that the Lawrences would want to do it as well, but they don't have any modern um, two strokes just laying around where it's kind of easy to throw something together. Yeah. I think the last time I did it, it took them a lot of effort, a lot of time and uh, testing and, and manpower to get this thing right. Because in the end, it, you know, it's still, it's a lot more risky with, with one of those bikes. And yeah. I think it's more so just difficult to invest that kind of time and especially for multiple riders. So they weren't a fan of uh, Ripple Straight Rhythm as well. And, uh, but again, I also want to honor um, a commitment that I've made to my sponsor like Red Bull and um, I'm down to do it. And, um, again, you know, there's other writers that, you know, everybody's contract set up different as well, but luckily my agent, Steve, like he's very smart with this stuff. And, um, like I said before, legally, I am allowed to do these off season races because yeah. there's nothing in my contract that states, Hey, you can't, or that Honda has a say about where I'm racing and where I'm not racing. So I don't have that in my contract. So I had every right to really do this commitment. And I feel like, especially the way we did it so far in advance, everybody being aware of it and everything just was legit. And I've, you know, the way this is going right now was a shocker to us. And yeah. Yeah. Obviously with the fans, I mean, and we know why you're doing it and the reasons for being doing it for the fans and upholding that commitment. What are you trying to accomplish out of this? Like, do you feel like this is something that needs to be like changed? Like, I guess you're kind of going against the grain in a sense, like, you know, it's always been, and I, and I've went through the same situation. Mm -hmm. Like, if you if they say no, you can't do it, and it just almost seems like you're kind of taking a stand a little bit and almost calling their bluff. Like, hey, uh, like okay, if that's what you guys feel, I'm still going to do it. I had a commitment to the fans, but it to to be here today when we're doing this interview, like, is there more to it? Like, are you trying to? I wouldn't say send a message, but change things, really. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I, here's the thing. In the years past and me being at a younger age and like being in the midst of my, I feel like it should always be the writer's um, decision to be able to do off season races. And of course the team, it ha they have to be involved, yeah. but it has to be a unit and we all have to pull on the same string. You know what I mean? Or you have the situation that I'm in right now. But I, for me, just in the past, I, I just wasn't ready to, to um, you know, I don't know if you want to say risk, but you know, it, it is a lot of risk going to races, of course. And, yeah. and, um, you know, they're, they're paying us to be, uh, to, to be, to take part in American supercross and motocross. Correct. Um, but on my side, you know, as a writer's side of things is, is the whole fan thing. So especially with me being from Europe, but I feel like I was smart over these last years and I have a lot of, I've had a lot of offers for a lot of money to do, uh, you know, some of these off races these off-season races and i never did in good faith also with honda to protect their investment and but me being at an older older age right now and and kind of wanting to 
to honor that commitment and, and being around my fans again from Europe and also Australia, because a lot of those guys, they can't come over here, you know, everything's so expensive nowadays. Um, it just made sense. So I guess I just want to, I guess I just want to show that, you know, this thing is, it's not about money. It's just where my heart's at and, and what I want to do and, and my connection to the fans. Um, and yeah. that's, that's really the stand that I'm taking here. No, I, and, I, and like I said, I appreciate that. I just feel like, I, I just feel like as far as with you doing this, like it, it has to, I, I think the fans would understand, like I would understand, like if Honda said you can't do it or, or whatever the reason, like they're not, uh, the budget's not doing it. Like, you know, they'll be bummed, but they understand. But the fact is like, to me, like I'm, I'm asking you these questions because like, I, I feel like the, the out would be okay. Like it, it's not like you're just saying, Hey, I'm not going to race. Like, Hey, can't go yep. do it, whatever, whether it's them deciding not to, whether it's no budget. Um, but to me, like the fact that you're going through it and risking your your yeah. future with Honda, it, it yeah, I feel like there's a message being said here. And I'm not I'm not meaning that in a negative way or no, you're saying you said it right. Like, yeah. it, it's perfect because um, I uh, I wanted people to know that, you know, and again, luckily, I'm in a position where I, I'm able to make this decision. I am not taking the easy route with this point by any means, you know what I mean? But at this point, I, I really, I don't care. It's not about that. It's not about the money, but um, I'm, I'm kind of just excited to see where it goes from here. Um, and I have to be thankful that I'm at least in the situation to to honor my commitment because like I said, the last thing I wanted to do is pull out of it, disappoint a lot of fans. And you know how it is with that and social media nowadays? Yeah. You, you can, you speak your truth and this is how it is, but there's always, you know, people will believe whatever they want to believe. And I feel like it would have looked bad on me either way, you know, whether it's really Honda making that decision or, you know, a lot of people probably wouldn't even blame me for going that route, but yeah. I didn't want to do that. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So I hope that the, I hope that the people and the fans appreciate it. And I know that they do because there's a lot of awesome people out there and, um, it's uh it's some ex it's some harsh but exciting times yeah i mean i i really truthfully think the fans would appreciate it more if by like hearing that part you know because yeah. again at the end of the day like i mean they on the they have to support you i mean even mm -hmm. if they said that you could go and if they didn't supply you um with motorcycles and mechanics like you wouldn't be able to do it and i think the fans do understand that um but the fact is like they're saying no and and we can talk about what's their reasoning behind that? Like whether they're just saying like, hey, we don't want to do this because of X or is it budgeting thing or is it, you know? Uh, to me, it can't be a budgeting thing because I we went to Honda and I said, hey, let me get a couple of motors, ECU suspension, you know, like just a couple of the ve very important things because that's essentially what I'm on this entire, all of these years and we know yeah. that it works. And uh, I mean, something can always happen, but it's the safest thing that we have. And um, I had a budget for it. Like I was willing to pay Honda X amount, doesn't matter what it even is, mm. to just have the stuff that I'm familiar with. Mm. But again, also that got shut down, um, which was, you know, made us scramble a little bit more to try and get our get our stuff sorted. But I feel like in general, like it wasn't really that big of a deal. Um, and I was willing to pay for it. I was willing to, you know, ship it. Like everything was on us. All I was asking for is for that material and I got shut down. Oh, wow. So it wasn't, it wasn't that like all of a sudden they were like, Hey, you can't go. Like, it seems like they were trying to like, Hey, you're going to have to pay for it. Like, in they like, we're not going to uh, support you financially with it. And you're like, I'll pay for it and get that part. And then it, then it kind of gradually went into this. Like totally. It, it's almost okay. like it went worse and worse, right? Like yeah. we had this whole conversation about this thing and, oh yeah, yeah okay. Um, we don't like it, but okay, we'll work around yeah. it, whatever. Like, and for the longest time and nobody ever mentioned anything. And, um, you know, as far as we knew, it was a go. And then it just, it kind of just got worse and worse. And, um, you know, I, I tried to, cause I don't, you know, it's not like I wanted it for free. Like I said, I offered money for it. I just really wanted to be as safe as possible and try to do my job as good as I possibly can, even leading up to it. And, um, I guess it just got a bigger problem and we got shut down on everything. And then on top of not just being able to use the material, the motors and, yeah. and ECU and things like that after that, which got worse, the offer was being taken, uh, you yeah. know, so it, it, just gradually, like you said, it just gradually got worse. And that's what makes this even a harder pill to swallow, I guess. Because yeah. it wasn't a budget thing for them. I don't really, I don't think it even really affected them yeah. for that reason. 
Um, and in general, I would think that Honda would be stoked for me for these couple to kind of go globally a little bit, you know what I mean? Like Honda in Australia, Honda in Europe, like that's, that's a big deal, you know? And they didn't even have to really do anything for it because I would have been representing Honda, but they didn't even really want that. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, and again, that's why I was kind of asking these questions because from a fan's point of view, I'll be bummed. Like we'll be bummed if you can't go race there, but we would understand. And from Honda's point of view, like for them saying, okay, like they, they race in Europe, it would be good for them. And like, it's not like they haven't done that before. And yeah. if it's a budget thing, you're offering to pay for it. I so, don't know how it would have hurt. Them. Yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So it you would you would assume there's more to it than just that. Right. Like yeah. you would assume that it, it's not just, you know, we don't want you to go racing over here. Like there's other reasons. And this might be just a um, a way out or 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 again, there there must be a bigger power of why they would be willing to lose Ken Roxon over these two races that. At the end of the day, if it's not going to hurt them financially yeah. and they race overseas, then like, what's the real reason behind it? And I, I would understand if it was a lot of races or whatever, full yeah. series, whatever it may be. But I just feel like this situation is this small, but they now they ended up making pretending like it's this big. You know what I mean? So yeah. it just, I just, my ultimate thing was it went from three races to two races. Just let this year, let me race these two races and you know, and, and, and get this thing done and just have fun with it. Enjoy with it. Bit of vacation, you know, should help me in the long run in general. And, um, they just simply decided not to assist me with it. And yeah. Yeah. So when you mean free agent, like, what does that mean? What, what does that entail for you? Free agent for me just simply means that I am, I'm up for grabs. Like, and, and I want to make that very clear again, it is not about anybody getting hurt and me just jumping in. But, um, I guess that's just kind of the exciting times. Like does, a team after you know these next couple of weeks or few weeks or whatever or tomorrow even maybe i don't know um are they going to come up with an offer are they going to be able to pull it off and have me in, and if it if that's not the case um I, i'm it you know it's it is what it's not ideal because i want to i want to go race but at the same time um i feel like uh, i have faith in my capabilities and um abilities but yeah. of course i have to be out on racing so i the, the the near future is so open for me and, and it kind of gets me excited um and so we'll you know there's this percentage of uh chance that uh, i might not line up for supercars if if, if it you know yeah if that, nobody comes up well kind of weird to think about but that was my next question um if 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 it doesn't come up with the right team like would you race to supercross on your own like or would you you're planning on racing obviously and like the motivation that's why this whole to me it's it's cool and I, re, I respect it i respect it i mean i think everybody has their own like opinions about it but like you are taking you are taking a stand so whenever like you know it could be two races three races four races in like if a team decides to pick me up and sign me then i am 100 percent ready for it and that's what i want to make very clear too is that i'm not you know after um uh, england straight rhythm and australia by no means am I just going to sit back and like, hey, like, I don't ever, I'm, I don't know, I'm just chilling. I am 100% focused on on training and getting ready for for racing because that's my ultimate goal. And we'll see what the, we'll see what the teams have to say, you know, maybe they, uh, they'll stand up for me and, 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 and snatch me up. I, I'm all I can say is that I'm super motivated about this. Yeah. From a pan, uh, fan's uh, point of view, like, why not go out and just do it yourself? Like build your own team? Yeah. Um, I actually had somebody who was, it may have been even my mom or something, but I don't really know about the whole details about that stuff. I mean, ideally, you know, when you do your own thing, you can bit some piece together pretty much whatever you want. Um, having said that, um, I just think, I just think the situation is still so fresh that yeah. I don't really have an answer with that, you know, cause that's something that business wise I would have to discuss with, with a couple of people and, um, and see where that leads us. But I know it's, uh, probably a lot of money that goes into that. And uh, it's just everything's so young still at this point that there's a, there could be a chance. I don't know. It might make sense one way or another, but I don't, I don't really have a straight answer for that yet, you know? And, uh, but I get what you're saying. Like, Hey, start off the first few rounds, even maybe with some stuff that, you know, and then see if somebody else comes up and, and wants me. I don't know. It, it's kind of hard for me to, to think about that. And I haven't even asked Steve yet to, to what, what the whole deal is with that situation, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I know, I know the cost and I know the difficult that it, it would is to start your own team mm -hmm. or start your own program, you know, so I 
not necessarily asking for me or just asking for the fans because i mean that's yeah. what they'll say if you want to go racing then like you know why not is there an opportunity for you to do it yourself like if you can rocks and to i'm going to be on the gate in 2023 no matter what like whether i have to do it on my own or it's a more i'm going to be ready as right. a free agent and if the right opportunity presents itself then like we go racing so um, i think it's probably probably going to be like that like hey yeah. i'm, I'm going to be ready and when the time's right i can come race on my own I, I don't know that that's just too young right now i can't really i don't really know what's going on with that because steve might be like oh hell no we're not doing that you know what i mean yeah or yeah. he might be like well there might be some ways and sponsor you know what i mean like there might be ways to to be able to do that um i don't know yeah i personally don't think um i mean you're Ken rocks and dude. Yeah. I mean, you can rocks. And I think if you're in that situation, then there's a lot more to play than just that. So, but, um, and, and I'm aware of the situation too. Like I'm ready for that. Like if, if, you know, crap hits the fan and, and, you know, I have to sit out from then to then, like I, I'm just prepared for it. And I, I know what I'm getting myself into. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And I think this, it's, it's just simple. Like to me doing these two races and especially for the reason I'm doing them, right? Like, yeah, it's great pay and whatnot, but like ultimately the fan, like I was, you know, kind of craving going to those races simply for the fans. So um, the fact that they're making it this big of a deal, it, you know, obviously, I don't know, maybe they must not care about me as much as I, as I thought or as we thought, because to me, if, if, if I'm a team owner, team manager, or some of the higher ups, and, and this would be the situation, maybe I'm biased because I'm actually in it, but I, you know, in the end, I would have been like, you know what, we're invested in you. We want to keep you on because they have, they have made it clear that, Hey, we, we want to keep you and all this stuff. But in the end, you maybe just don't want to keep me as much as you maybe say you do. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's two rounds. I'm not committing to a 10 round series, you know, yeah, it's two rounds. So I feel like this thing could have been fairly simple and without a hassle and no problem. And they still decided to kind of like strong arm us. And I feel like it's just a little bit of bad business and i feel like they just put me and my agent in a position where um you know we had the power and we're we're, we're able to to do what we're doing at this moment you know yeah i i agree i mean i i do think there's whatever the reason that's the the fans and, and with honda like i mean if it was um you know financial whatever the reason is to start the conversation it's about once you kind of get into it and you get into the details mm -hmm. of where like you really find out like how much they they are invested in you and and i get your point and i understand like the fans were a big part of the decision to like continue to fight for it because look what the reasons why they're saying i can't go or what i'm ultimately going there is for them but when you start like really getting into it and diving into it and you you learn about the company you learn about the people you're doing business with like i think that the reasons to actually go through with this um there's it's bigger than just like the fans and and i it goes the same for honda like i believe there's more to it than just saying like you know what we don't want to it's two it's two races financially we don't want to race because he's hurt i believe there's more to it like mm -hmm. and whether that's um them getting pressure or them saying you know what like this is an opportunity to go a different direction have a new start um you know whatever that is i think it's just this is an, an almost I wouldn't say an out for them, but this is a cause for them to be like, well, it's this. So we're not going we're just going to move on. But mm -hmm. I don't really think it comes down to um, like if they want to do two races, I think they would figure it out. Right. Yeah. And but the same goes for you also. Like it is two races. Mm -hmm. So are you are you willing to risk the the Supercross and, and, and possibly not having a ride over like two races? So. That's why I, I'd say the truth is, um, like you're, you're taking the stand that it's bigger than just mm -hmm. these, um, the two races and it, it is for the fans, but there's more to it than that. And a fresh start, mm -hmm. um, dealing with people, whatever it is, um, you know, those are all the details that I think that makes your story and makes it more what I want to know appealing. And, and I think that the fans and people respect you more like knowing that. So yeah. I hope um, so. Yeah. And in a realistic, like if this was, if this was a COVID situation and I would potentially go over there with nobody in the stadium, like they, they, they wouldn't be able to do that. But I'm just saying like, then I wouldn't go, like I'm still getting paid good money, but like that would be a different situation because again, if there's no fans or whatever, it probably, you know, that way the races wouldn't exist. But I'm just saying like, if there's no fans around, 
then I would kind of defeat the purpose of why I'm doing this as well, you know. So and you signed you signed this you signed to go race like you committed signed the contract to go race long time ago. Um, so looking at it as a fan perspective, um, and I even one of the questions I got like there's no obligations to where like you're stuck in the world super like the the overseas races like this is strictly like did you have an out in that deal or you possibly can get out or, or are you stuck? Yeah, luckily I have a I have a unicorn agent that's really good with that stuff. And if I wanted to get out of that contract tomorrow, I could, but I simply am not because it's it's not my style and it would defeat the purpose. So, um, you know, Steve's great at uh, wording everything right to where you know everybody's happy. But I do not want to pull out of it, even though I could. Yeah, well, more power to you, man. Um, you know, I respect that. And I'm sure the fans will um, as, as well. I know it's a difficult situation. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a business side of sports. And like this, you have to do the best thing for your family, your fans. And, and unfortunately, sometimes as riders and you get put in these situations where you have to make it a business business decision. But you also got to be able to sleep at night. And, yep. um, you know, it sucks to be in there. But at the end of the day, I think it, it is going to work out. And I know the fans appreciate it. So what's up, guys? It's your boy, James Stewart. You see this shirt I got on? Now, I know we all have family. We all be coming out here. Everybody wants to be a part of Bubba's world. I want to be a part of it. Well, if you want to, make sure you click on this link because you can get this shirt. At least you can get this far. We got a bunch of things coming in the future, some exciting things. And I know you send in your videos. Maybe you can end up on the show that way. But if not, always make sure you get this pretty shirt, black and white, and some more coming soon. Click this link right here. Go get yours. So coming in A1, um, did you have a good prep? Like, I think you were, no, we talked about it. I think you were sick coming into that a little bit. Of, yep. Uh, sick going in A1. Yep. And then you come out and you battle with your teammate half the way, but like otherwise it was a dominant win. Like right. pretty good. Was that expected? Like, did you feel good going into A1 or like, or was that kind of just like, wow, I mean, I am Ken Roxy. I am that good. Like leading into that. What was... Um, what was the feeling going into Anaheim? My feel like this was probably the weirdest I've ever gone into Anaheim one, I swear. Cause normally I come in super prepared. Like I had my thing, whatever, but, um, and I, I know people get tired of it, but this whole thing of me talking about when I'm like, my health isn't good or whatever, like honestly, this over these last couple of years, they're all freaking connected. You know what I mean? So people get over me talking about it, but basically what happened, what happened was I went to Red Bull and I uh, did my, my testing and, you know, all of that stuff, fitness stuff. So I was starting to feel really good, like better than ever. I went to, um, I went to my doctor and switched, like he was treating me for EBV and stuff. Like I was just really starting to come around. And then I got so dang sick, like unbelievably sick to where I was out for probably two to three weeks. And I was off the bike literally for almost four weeks leading up to Anaheim because mm -hmm. I was so useless and so weak for so long that like I, I didn't have to go, I could barely lay on the couch, you know? So there was no point in me going doing anything. So I came into Anaheim with a complete shit show of an off season due to that. Cause that was, that took up an entire month or over an, over a month. And so winning Anaheim was, was like really surprising. Having said that though, I was, I was really focused because I knew I had super crappy um, preparation because of that and that. And I, I was still feeling weak, like my legs were all jello and stuff. But um, I got really good stars and I just kind of felt decently comfortable. And I just had good starts like through heat race and everything and things were just clicking and, and the track got super gnarly. But I really, and throughout the off season too, I really struggled with my bike. Like I couldn't make it through the whoops to save my life. Yeah. Um, I was praying every lap I came around. So from then on, right, like you win the first, uh, win the first main and um, you try to get better, right? Like I got to get some riding time under my belt and, um, you know, do some testing. And so from then on, you know, went to Oakland, I had that crash with Chase um, where I actually I still have a little bit of pain in my neck. Like I think <laughs> I hurt some ligaments or something that takes forever to heal. So 
Um, but I struggled with the bike ultimately, right? And I was I was trying everything I can physically to get myself um, in really good shape. But from then on, we basically just were testing and testing and doing this. And then, you know, throughout the week, you don't really have that much time. You also got to practice a little bit. So a lot of time goes by and you've done, you know, a certain amount of testing and I've never really gotten any results. So it just really went downhill quickly and including with my immune system, like the way this whole EBV Epstein-Barr thing works is that I get super depleted off of any nutrients, really. So yeah. it's I have a really hard time keeping up with everything. So most of the time I start up the season really good and then I can't absorb any nutrients and I just go downhill from there because my body can't keep up with recovery and everything. So I was trying to get the bike better and, and you know how that rabbit hole goes sometimes, yeah. right? And things just like really started crumbling and you know, I was not feeling great. I was trying to punch myself out of a hole and, and getting fit. But no matter what the training that I did or the writing that I did, I was never able to really absorb anything, never mind even recover the full way. But I was good enough, obviously, to win a main event. But ultimately it came down to, I did a bunch of testing and I was, I used to love the whoops and uh, I, I could, I couldn't make it through the whoops to save my life. And, um, you know, I, I went down more in the whoops than I ever did really. So, um, that was kind of like haunting me for all year, really. So, um, I know people get sick and tired of it, but every time these things happen over a longer period of time, I unfortunately have had a problem with my immune system and this EBV, like it's all connected. And I know it's, it's hard to understand because when you feel good and you don't know it, it, you know, it's not like a broken arm. You can walk around, you have a cast on your arm. Everybody knows you have a broken arm, but, um, with this kind of stuff, you can't really see it until I jump on the bike and go racing and riding. So, um, it was an extremely difficult year for me that way. Uh, just trying to come out of a hole, which uh, I was never really able to do either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you just, you answered my first like six questions down <laughs> there, but no, I mean, I, I think as a, as a fan and, and as a racer, like I understand, like you get into these and, and if you, if you haven't been a part of that, like you, you don't really understand, like, obviously I haven't went through what you went through, like as far as health wise, but. I know like just uh, the mental battle it took me to get over to the Yamaha from like crashing, mm -hmm. getting on and racing Suzuki. Like it, it takes a while to mentally feel like there's change. Like you have to do it then do it again and do it again to like start mm -hmm. believing it. So, um, you know, I guess why I was asking you about Anaheim one going into that, was that more of a like, wow, like I'm good. It's more of a shock, but the, it seemed like from that point on, like there was a, like it went downhill pretty quickly yeah. until we got the Anaheim three and you were jumping through the whoops. And that's when I said, Whoa, I said, the guy's way too good to be doing that. Like there, there has to be something else going on. And obviously now hearing it, like you were struggling with the bike, struggling with the, you know, um, you know, nutrition, not nutrition, but you know, s struggling yourself physically. Um, and then at that time we were on the show, we were talking about, there was rumblings of like, you possibly not want to be at Honda and, and all these different things. And so, I was just more curious on like, you know, what was going on? Like, was it, was it more of, it sounds like it was a combination of both, uh, the bike and, yeah. and you, um, to, to ultimately get to that point. And then you got to Daytona and then decided yeah. to take some time off. No, definitely. I mean, it, it's, it's tough. And you know, you can have a bike and you can have certain problems with, you know, it's not perfect, but like they're manageable and it depends yeah. where they are on the track. Right. But the way that our tracks this year were built too were just, they were gnarly. Like you yeah. had to be comfortable and the way the whoops were built and they got super rough and the whoops was my biggest, like I, I couldn't get through them. I was so borderline scared of them because my front, like it just wanted to knife and my rear did whatever it wants. Like it basically the worst possible situation. But what do, what do I do at the race there? Like when they're like, what do I do? I freaking, I look like a complete idiot and I'm coming in and I'm like, do you freaking see how I'm going through the whoops? Like, I can't, like, I don't know. And that's, you know, we test, you go softer and you stiffer and slower. And there was nothing ever that took that away, the problems that I had. And actually I had them in 21 too. And I said, I was lucky that I was, you know, we had jumper whoops during that time because I struggled in the whoops really freaking bad. And I normally love the whoops. So that's been a continuous story for, for a longer period of time. Um, but it, it was definitely a combination. It's just with, how uncomfortable I was on the bike. It just added to the whole situation and it made it even worse. Cause then I was slow. Yeah. I was feeling crappy and it just created a bunch of problems, honestly. Yeah. So at that point after Daytona, you take some time off and then where you're, I guess there was a little uncertainty as far as the fans part, like lining up for um, mm -hmm. Paula. And then there was this tweet 
this Instagram, mm -hmm. this Instagram post. What was that about? I, this was simply about, I was honestly, after Daytona, it all got worse before it got better. Like I was, oh, I, I forgot even in, um, like I had COVID at one point, like it was just things adding to my, to the health problems. Right. And, uh, um, when you already feel crappy and you add things to it, it just, it just goes backwards. And how do you, how do I compete with that? When I always compare it to like, let's say an Eli Tomeg or a Chase Sexton, doesn't matter if they feel as good and they're as comfortable on the bike as I was in 2016, it's really hard for me to compete with that feeling crappy and being uncomfortable on the bike, you know? Yeah. So that sometimes you have those like big differences, but after Daytona, I honestly all got worse before it got better. Like I was just miserable, like mentally and stuff like these mental problems that I had are all medically, I don't know if you would call it induced, but I always try my ass off and I get, you know, this EBV thing. I start feeling like crap and, and it's from, you know, it's a hard pill for me to swallow. And from the outside, you know, people always think everything's great. And then, you know, I, I'm, I don't want it. And then I, I just, I drop back or I fade or all this kind of stuff, you know? And after Daytona, I was like, shit, I had a terrible season. I was feeling horrible. I was bad with the bike. Like I just had a lot of like anxiety and depression balled up in me due to that because I, I know what I can do. And, and I just, I wasn't happy with anything on that side of things. Like when it comes to my business, like I love that I have my family around because um, they make things a lot more, more pleasant in that situation, but it was a really bad super cross season, right? So it all got worse. I feel like before I kind of like started to snap out of it a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't really have, or take that much time before Supercross to really prep. Cause it like, things were just not right. And I could feel it physically too. So then I, I just, I guess you can say, I just made up my mind and like, I'm like, I need to, I need to get, but this is just my will to like, want to do this. So, and you know me, I'm very um, vocal about like what I do and I feel like it, it holds me accountable. So I guess I just like, I put my head down and you know, I was eating right and I was doing everything, every sec or every minute of the day for me was focused on getting better and, and better and better. And it, I wasn't just doing my training and everything else kind of like, hey, I'm doing it and then I'm, I'm chilling or whatever. It, I, was, I was very, um, with it and I, and I really wanted it. Right. So anytime I made a, I made a smoothie or whatever, like I gained confidence from that because I know I did everything possible for my body to be at its best. And the same with the training side of things. So I guess I just like had some good days or, or decent days of training and trying everything I can. And I'm like, you know what, I'm freaking doing this again. Cause people obviously were, I was gone from, uh, from Instagram for a while too, just cause I had nothing to say, you know, I needed to yeah. figure my stuff out. And then it, it holds me accountable and I know it, it comes off or maybe, you know, I'm kind of like the only guy that really does that in our sport, but I kind of like it sometimes, you know, it straightens you out, keeps you accountable. And, uh, and it honestly just shows that I believe in my capabilities, you know, and, and unfortunately I'm being held back with some of the health issues that have been going on. But, you know, I'm working with a nutritionist because a bunch, you know, all these tests that we usually do, whether that's blood tests or whatever, nutrition, they take forever to come back. Yeah. Right. So you want to fix something, but you're, it doesn't happen overnight. So I'm working with a nutritionist currently because I wasn't able to absorb any nutrients and it doesn't matter how healthy I ate or whatever, I couldn't absorb everything that I needed to recover. Right. So you're just starting to go this and I'm trying to trying to do that. And now I'm working with a nutritionist. I guess that's, what's kind of different throughout this, this off season right now Yeah, is me working with her and, um, really trying to fix my immune system and, and my gut and make sure that I, I'm able to absorb everything I need to recover and be hundred percent. So that's going to be my biggest focus on, uh, during this off season, of course, combined with some good training and all this yeah. stuff. But for me, it's really about feeling, starting to feel normal. Cause it was never, I never questioned my, my will. Like, I don't need anybody to, to punch me out of bed and say, Hey, go on a bike ride. Like I, I, I do that on my own. Like I don't, I'm really good with that. And, um, but I never really absorbed any of the, um, confidence from the training cause I never felt great. So it's really hard to like, go through a bike ride or riding a dirt bike or anything and not like absorb the confidence from like, man, I really suffered my ass up, but it felt good. And coming back a couple of days later and actually feeling better than you did the day before, that's what was really tough for me. Cause I never really had that feeling and it's hard to figure out like, do I train too much? Not enough. Like what is the issue here? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. And I think like, you know, it's, it's not like you, you don't know what people are going through until like, you know, we were having this conversation and like, I, I didn't even know, like, I mean, I guess the fans, we knew you were having sicknesses, but 
it did become a part where it's like, all right, dude, like, I know. Okay. All right. Like what's going on? And then, you know, now you kind of explain it. It makes sense. And do you feel like with this, this new, um, nutritionist, like, has it like, is that you kind of pinpointed the problem? Like with this, like, has it been something that's, um, you guys have, have, have figured out? I mean, it obviously sounds like, you know, what the problems is about not being able to absorb stuff and, and you start looking back and you're like, damn, I wish I would have done that, figured that out a while ago. You're doing all this training and it's not really, not really bending it, right. benefit from it because you're not being able to, to absorb some of the stuff. Working with this, this lady, like, have you kind of felt like a change or you pinpointed like, this is what we believe it is and it should get better? Yeah. So based on the, uh, the panel that we did, and I'm not a hundred percent sure if it was even a blood or a P test or, or what are you, cause I do so many tests throughout the year just cause I want to stay on top of it. But basically some of the markers, like I can look at them and it's just like green, red, red, green. Like it, it doesn't, just because it says red, it doesn't mean that that's the problem, you know, just there. So that's why you need all these people or the good doctors to really read an actual blood panel, right? And through that, uh, the first message that I got is that um, bad news or, I mean, I don't know bad news, but like we have definitely have some holes to fill. The good news is that it is fixable, you know? So that's mm -hmm. good. Um, and, and that is honestly, this is separate from even the EBV stuff, you know what I mean? Because um, I think the issue that I had with not absorbing nutrients, I think it came um, through antibiotics and, and having too much yeast in my stomach. And um, somehow there's something in there, whatever, you know, I can eat well or whatever, but I'm not absorbing the right stuff. So then you get depleted in your proteins and like everything that you need to basically physically recover. Yeah. Um, and, and it's all based in immune system. Like the way they said it, like if your stomach is messed up and you can't do all of the things that you need to do to recover, everything's going to be off. So then, you know, I got sick three times throughout outdoors yeah. um, and back to back to back where I'm like, dude, and I'm tired talking about this whole sickness thing. I don't want to talk about what, what do you want me to tell you? Like, I can't yeah. tell you, yeah, dude, I feel great. And then I go from first <laughs> to freaking 15th. You yeah. know what I mean? But um, it, it's, that's why I've kind of just kept quiet lately too, because there's no, it, it doesn't even matter what I say anymore because people are always going to just look at it. And, and, you know, there's a lot of haters. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I focus mainly on my on, on the people that care about me and fans, right? But for whatever reason, the the other side of the people, it uh it stings a lot more, right? Like sometimes the bad outweigh the good. I, I don't know why we are like that. Mm. But um, so it's just been going on for so long, you know, that's just a big issue. And I do believe that that is a big problem and, and I'm working on it. But with the supplementation stuff, you also have to be really careful because yeah. There are certain things in there that actually made me feel like crap too, you know, but you also have to kind of weed through, weed through the stuff and what it really is, you know, cause certain stuff I need to take to be able to, to fix some of the stuff. And that's not something that happens overnight that, yeah. you know, it takes weeks and weeks and weeks. So I'm currently on that stuff, um, to try and get better. And, um, you know, I, I, I see, I see it helping me a lot and it, I really, you know, time will tell, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, like we talked about when we first got here, um, the, sometimes like it's not necessarily like the right change wrong change it's the fact that you're changing you yeah. know and i think that's the biggest thing and, and especially for you like you know you've been on the same team for a while and it seems like you're having the um you know somewhat of the same issues and you know getting sick and just i mean you said it the latter part of the season mm -hmm. every every year it's, it's always a pattern it's right? a pattern yeah. yeah and so how do you break that and and i think whatever you do to break that whether you fix it or not um, time to be told, but I think going into the season, it's probably important for you to like, to, to have something that, you know, is different. Like you like, whether, like I said, you figured that out and it, it ended up working for you time, to, uh, time mm -hmm. would tell, but I, I think it would just be hard to, to go into the season, not having something totally. and, and, and not, um, you know, not change. So I think like if I were to do the same thing that yeah. I've done in the past few years that has an ideally where, yeah, I totally get that. Like sometimes you need a, you need a change and, and, um, you know, um, cause if I go in the same way, like and you're, you're basically almost just waiting for the same problems to happen as well. So that's what I'm, that's why, what I mean by I am motivated because I am still trying, like I've spent so much money to, um, fix or help my situation and help my health and, and everything. It's, it's kind of crazy, but I like doing that because the sport, like, you know, I, I want to be good. I'm doing this for myself. I'm not looking at the sport as like, man, I need to do this just to, just to, to race for other people. Like I'm doing this or I spent money on myself. I invest in myself because I really like, 
that's what I do. It's what we've done for so long. And yeah. I, I just, I want to race and I want to be happy racing. And I haven't been simply because it doesn't matter how much, um, mental effort and physical effort I put in. I feel like I was never really paid for all the work that I do or yeah. that I did. And that's like a big weight that, you know, yeah. kind of like pulls you down. Yeah. No, I, I know personally, <laughs> yeah. I know personally, um, was there a time this year that like, I guess, especially when you took that time off around Daytona, was that a time like you were like, I'm, I think this is it. Yeah. hundred like, percent. Yeah. I was, it was some very dark times that, and it's even hard for me to really explain because nobody, like we can talk about it now. And it, it, it's like, you know, nobody really knows, but I had a really hard time because I was super bitter at everything. Like I was so over trying my ass off and just like, it just never paid off and never, I'm it, for me, I'm, I've said this before. It is not about, Hey, I'm going to go win every race. It's not going to happen. I just want to feel good. Like I don't want to battle for it, but if I always have to let go because I hanging on that thing, like a flag, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like that's not fun every freaking weekend. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's I, tough. I experienced that in 12 when I sat on the hay bell and pulled my helmet off at Houston. Um, it, it was like we tested and tested and no matter what we were doing, we just kept like ending up in the same results. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, okay, we'll go, I'll go to the race and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to be safe, whatever. And then you go to your racer. So like I show yeah. up and then I'm battling like Kevin Whitney. I'm like, get, you know, screw it. Like I'm going to go for it. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm, I'm crashing and, and yeah. all that. And so, yeah, I quit. Like it was the same thing. So I understand. And that's why I asked you, um, you know, it, it for me, my, my savior was switching to Suzuki. Mm -hmm. Like I, it, there was a change. I wasn't, I couldn't do the same thing and, right. and it was good for a while. Then we started struggling, but I enjoyed the process because I right. knew I was chasing something and it was different than the past. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, totally. um, you know, a big, and I think people will respect that. Like, I mean, now I understand more from what just hearing from you and it makes me respect you more, um, knowing the situations and, and, and believe that, Hey, you know, this, this kid does still have it. Like he still, he still wants it cause he fought through all that. Mm -hmm. And it's easy. Just like you're, you're making decisions to, to, um, you know, what's the best decision, what you want to do uh, for this, this whole supercross thing in your contract, like you're doing it because you want to do it. And, um, I, I, I still, I feel like this is the same thing. Like you're like you, you won championships, you made a lot of money and considering like the injuries and being sick, like it would probably, no one would ever blame you for like, mm -hmm. you know what? All right, let's just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take it up. I'm gonna hang up the boots, but you're still fighting and you're still trying to figure it out. So um, and that's a hard pill to swallow, right? Like, I feel like the injury for how, no, like, I look back a lot, actually. I look through photos and videos. And I'm like, Fuck, she, I don't, I don't remember, not that I don't remember it being that bad, but it was freaking gnarly. The crazy part is that my arm, my hand, like, it's just, they're so solid, but I feel like it's everything that came with that shit that messed me up. I mean, I'm pretty heavy right now. Like, I'm probably 170 pounds, 100, you know, in the low 170. I left the hospital in 2017 at 140. Mm. Like, wow. That's light. So I, I mean, I, I had like eight surgeries in, in three and a half weeks or whatever, but you know, they have to put you on antibiotics to not get infection and everything. And it just seems like from that point on, my body has just changed a little bit and, uh, or a lot of bit. And that's just when all the problems started happening. I'm yep. like, dude, I don't, my, I, mean, I don't know what it was or if it wiped me out completely. If I just, you know, if I keep these arms, whatever, and if I could do this and just not struggle with my health and like feeling crappy like that, I even still to this point, I still believe that I can win, whether that's races or championships. I just, I know that I still can, but there's just some things need to get figured out. And I know I've talked about it a lot and it's been years, but Hey, I'm, I'm still freaking trying. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I always, I, I keep it honest and like, I would tell you straight up, like, if you couldn't, and if I, be I believed you couldn't, I would just tell you. Like, yeah, no, and yeah, I want yeah. that too. Yeah, like but I actually do believe, like you, you could. I mean, we've seen it this year outdoors. I mean, yeah. as much as you struggle, like in all the things you're going with, like oh, it's never been about speed. Yeah. Like it's it's not even not. It's been about like you, um, personally, and you're fighting a lot of demons, and and now we kind of got a chance to get on the inside and really. Mm -hmm. um, That's the best way of saying it. Like yeah. it's demons, right? Like and especially ones something has gone on for years and years like that that shit it's hard to shake yeah. you know what i mean like it just it almost feels like that that's you you know like feeling like crab and sickness and like you get the stigma around you um and it's a really hard one it takes a long time to shake that i guess um i don't know maybe people forget quick but 
Yeah, it's been it's been a rough ride that way, that's for sure. Yeah. It's not what I ever thought my career was going to look like to be honest. And and you know how it is. Like it can and, and and this is still easy, right? Like a lot of other bad things can happen, like it but it does wear on you mentally, especially when you're willing to do anything and everything to to be up there and then you show up. And it's also right like UFC guys for example, they fight two, three times a year, one time a year. Like we do this every year for freaking 30 races, you yeah. know, and and you know, you feel like shit one weekend, it doesn't mean that you're going to show up the next weekend and feel like Hercules, you know, so. Yeah, and vice versa. Uh, and, vice and vice versa, versa yeah. yeah. so if you're fighting with it mentally, um, that just makes it even and harder. Well, I think for, you know, I'm excited. I, I'm excited and I appreciate you coming on here and, and explaining that a little bit and the whole announcement about, you know, mm -hmm. the, the the team and, and stuff. Like, I, I hope that works out for the best. I think we all can appreciate, and I, I know the fans, they will they appreciate the honesty and, and, you know, what you're doing and stuff. And, and, and again, at the end of the day, like, it's it's your choice. You have to – yeah, there's racing. It's a, it's a team. It's it's about a lot of mm -hmm. uh, different people. But at the end of the day, like, you know, the decisions are being made, and you're making one for yourself. No one can question that. No one right. – I mean, people can question it, but they can't, um, you know, really uh, – I guess attack you for that and i think for me personally i appreciate it and i think it, it gives me more respect after talking to you today about all this stuff and um it, it'll work out i'm excited to see what you got so i guess one of the final questions i have and, and for all of us is like what's the future like for ken roxon yeah um so honestly i am super committed to these next couple of years especially right like i want to do supercross and motocross um anything past that I don't know because obviously I, this is the first time in my career uh, or in my life really that I have so many open question and that the the future is so uncertain because normally I do have a contract and it's yeah. like hey you're going you're going racing supercross and motocross for sure and I don't have that right now so I guess that's open right now and I'll kind of just at this point roll with the punches which what we normally don't do since you know we, we try to get long-term security I guess mm. financially and um yeah, so now I am gonna get ready here for, and I'm gonna continue getting ready for Supercross in 2023. I wanna race Supercross, motor, uh, Supercross and outdoors. Um, and then anything down the road from there, I don't know. We'll probably get into some surfing, some mountain mm -hmm. biking. And, and I don't even know, just because I say these two years now, that doesn't mean I don't race for longer. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just, you know, looking back and, and wanting to be done this year at one point and now actually like being excited about what the future holds um they're big differences so yeah change yeah. change change, yeah. change yeah. you're right change yeah well i'm excited to see you i hope um i hope we see you on the gate i mean cool. i'm sure we will at anaheim um uh, 23 and then we'll, we'll see you here in a few weeks over in the world um over overseas doing that and i hey fans make sure you give this dude a a big old round of uh, applause however you want to say cheer for him because he's over there for, for you guys so um Ken, it was awesome having you on cool. here. I appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, good luck for the Sweet. future. Thanks, guys. Yeah.